If you're on time, you're late, right? That's true. Nah, we may disagree on this. <clears throat> Here's why. I think in most cases, if you're if you're like five or ten minutes early to an appointment, great. Uh, but maybe you know, if somebody's expecting me at their house, or I'm expecting somebody at my house at two o'clock in the afternoon, at two o one, I'm looking out the window like, where the hell is this person? Correct. But maybe I have to go to the bathroom. And like, I got eight minutes before this guy gets here. I think I can hit the head real quick. And then, yeah, just, I'm here, I'm here early. And then, you know. <laughs> so, I don't which know. Is, which is why you sit in your car and get your head around your client. Yes, right, And then exactly. you walk up at the right time. Yep. Uh, Welcome. <clears throat> just FYI, we've got Mr. Guy Grand, formerly. Afternoon, folks. Of Veteran Adjusting School. Uh managing director, co-founder, right? Um, guy has been in the business since 2002 Correct. and ran claims for 10 or 12 years and then decided that he wanted to help veterans coming back from overseas, um, kind of try to make a dent in the un veteran unemployment rate and uh, give these guys a good chance to, you know, to give back to those guys who have given so much, right? And we did. Um, and yeah, very successful. As far as I could tell, I think it's, it's, you know, the consensus is that it, Veteran Adjusting School was absolutely the top tier. I mean, it was. It was. For sure. And we were the only ones that the VA recognized for GI Bill benefits. Yeah. Right. And that's because we weren't smart enough to not know what we had to do for regulations. <laughs> so we did it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, you know, helping guys and gals um, get into a six figure business where you're making, you can make that six figures in six months kind of a deal, you know, over a storm season. Um, you know, it's, it's what we're trying to do with Adjuster TV, obviously. Definitely. Um, so it's glad to have him in the studio. Guy's got a lot more partners than I do for, for or he had for his training. Um, and so he's, you know, he's got some, unique insights on how to how what you guys can do to go from like where you're at right now if you haven't if you're you know if you're certified or not getting claims in your hands and working on them there's specific strategy that, strategies i think we can we can talk about as far as like when do you call what do you need to call okay. with you know what do you who do you call like is do you call a hundred different firms you just call you just go after one guy i mean what's what, what's the strategy so maybe let's start with like what i firms are looking for kind of like reverse engineer like what i firms are looking for and what what they want you to sh show up with like as, as an when adjuster. you're making an application yeah, when you're when you're when you're trying to like start a relationship with an IA firm to the point to where you get out of them with what you want and what and they get out of it what they need as far as like from a new person or from an experienced person. So you need insurance as an adjuster, including E and O. Learn what you need for free at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. A resume that doesn't go back until you were 18 years old. Yeah. But a pertinent resume. Right. So maybe you had some construction, maybe when you were growing up, like I was, my mom was in real estate. So I had to go fix her houses. So I have construction experience. Maybe you flipped houses. Maybe you worked in your uncle's construction. So something that's pertinent, what they're looking for is, you know, things that have to do with what Right. Maybe yeah. you were customer service, but you were the greatest person in customer service. Yeah. So, so these are kind of like lateral skills. Yeah. Extensive customer service experience. Um, yeah. And that can be retail or restaurants. It can, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. But it's it's having a resume that's pertinent to what they're looking for. Yeah. Right. I know a lot of our guys were military. Well, what what transfers over military experience i don't need 20 years of what they did and all their mous right all the i needed to know oh you know i was on this construction project in afghanistan for six months or whatever it was so that your training right yeah. so 
coming out of fast track i, I assume all these folks are fast track yeah people, this is fast track, for the most student group yeah so coming out of fast track maybe some the pertinent parts that you learn from fast track you know but you need to have a good resume you need to have a good photograph of yourself so they can see you you need to make sure all your emergency information's on there yeah. like ours was strange because it was specific to veteran adjusting school sure but i always told my students this isn't really for much except they're going to take your photo and put it into their profile they're going to take your emergency contact and put it into your profile they're going to take your right, exact, right, right. Exact, yeah. ad, exact net address and put it in your profile. Yeah, and then they're going to throw your resume away. Right. And so it's it's not about creating some big, long thing of here's my whole life, but what's pertinent to the industry which I'm going into. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at Hague Education. Dot com. Yeah. That's one of the big thing. Any certificates that you have, <clears throat> highly suggest you've got to have level one Xactimator. They're not even going to think about talking to you because they're not sure you know how to turn on a computer. Yeah. So you have to have that. Um, level two, better. Right? Um, yeah. Certificate from Matt. Um, home state license for sure i always told my students don't go buy 55 license and send them all up yeah get your home state send it up now next week maybe you bought 10 license but next week you're gonna send them the florida license hey dispatch just want you to know or hey recruiter just want you to know i got another license to this week and the next week but it's really all about creating relationship first with the recruiter and then getting away from the recruiter to the dispatcher and then creating the relationship with the dispatcher. Yep. Um, you know, when you're talking to these people, it's not, hey, I'm hungry, please, I need claims. It's how many kids do you have? You know, oh, sure. you're married? Great. Got a couple kids. How old are your kids? Seven and nine. Oh, man, mine are 18 now, but I remember seven and nine. <laughs> and right. having that conversation because that's what's creating the relationship. And if you really want to start getting claims, you better have a relationship with the people you're going after. Yep, for sure. And that's, you know, that's that's something that these guys have heard me say before. Um, you know, show up with some value. Right. Don't just be calling and being like, me, me, me. Can you give me some, can you give me the whatever? Right. I'm going to lead with value. I'm going to show the, the, the purpose of my call is to say, hey, listen, I just got my Florida license or I just picked up my WRT or I got my Hague got certified inspector or whatever it is. Exactly. Right? So just want to call up you know, my profile with you guys and, uh, and check in and just see what's going on. See if there's anything, you know, if you guys, you know, I did just get my New Mexico license, you know, if you've got something over there on my bags packed, I'm ready to go, you know, and, chit -chat that, with and, and not, be, not begging for, not begging for claims, right. But literally having conversation with the people you're talking to. And I, I will promise you, that's one of my things I always say, doesn't mean it's for sure. It just means that in my experience, yeah. That when I talk to a dispatcher on a Tuesday afternoon, just to call to say hi, you know, I know it's been really slow out there, but I just wanted to touch base, tell you, you know, I'm ready. Everything's good. And I hang up the phone and a hailstorm hits tomorrow morning. Who is the last person they think of? Yeah. Or the first person they think of is the last person they talk to. Yep. And, um, it worked all the time, yeah. but you have to keep in touch. Um, my, my graduates, they would come back to me and say, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm not getting enough work. And I'd be saying, when was the last time you talked? I sent an email two weeks ago and they never got back to me. Well, can you imagine how many emails pilot catastrophe service gets every day? Yes. <laughs> I get a lot of emails, so right, and you and I did too. But so those people are busy; they're not responding to emails, but they are going to pick up a phone or they're going to return a phone call, 
or if you left three messages over the last month, at some point they're going to call you back because they don't want you to bug them. Yeah. And at some point they're going to give you a claim because they don't want you to bug them. Great. Yep. And when I say bug, I'm not saying, poor me, I need more. It's, hey, how you doing? Just want, just want you to know I'm here. Yeah. And that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. It's relationship building, you know, one-on-one, basically. Completely. And it's the the same thing that we talk about as far as like building rapport with a, with a homeowner or a contractor is the same thing with, with the IA firms, right? Like you said, you know, smallest possible talk, you know, and you don't have to have like a whole like stand up routine for, you know, every different audience or different, you know, you don't have to like, you just have one or two questions that you ask everybody. Right. So, um, you know, the kids question or the, the whatever. So then you have like, you know, Rhonda, who's the person who always answers the phone at Alacrity. She's got two kids and they play soccer. My kids play soccer. So we talked about that for 30 seconds, right? Same. It's just like when you walk up to an insurance house, I'm scanning, looking for something to, to a little talk piece, right? They Maybe they have like an old wagon wheel or something in, in their landscaping. And maybe that has some, maybe it's just totally random or maybe they, they, their great grandparents were on the Oregon Trail. I mean, you never know, right? right? Or they've got a 1963 Corvette in the driveway, or a motorcycle, or beautiful flower beds, right? Or their house looks like they just painted it. Anything, right? I'm looking for something to like establish that I'm a human being and I'm there to. The, it makes it harder for people, I think, to dismiss you or to um, disagree. Like, which is with in the claims context anyway, if they kind of like you a little bit, right? Right. And and I affirms are the same way. The people that you talk to, they want to work with people that they want to work with, right? And that that includes people who aren't like anxious calling they're they're waiting until the anxiety level about not going to work has reached a fever pitch and they're calling with that energy, right? And so they're calling up, you can hear it in their voice, you know, they're 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 nervous, they're scared, they're terrified that they're not going to get any work. And it comes across it comes across as needy or bossy or whatever, right? Correct. But if you're if you have like a cadence, you know, where you're you've got and we talk about this next, but like, you know, the I firms that you're gonna focus your energy on, um, you have a list of those those companies and you call them once a week. You know, you you've you did pick up six licenses or eight licenses or whatever it is. And so I'm getting thumbs up on the screen now. Um <laughs> So, so then you you have a little bit of value to to pop in with, right? And maybe you were able to ask one or two of those people that you talk to, if you know, it, kids question or you know whatever it is, the weather, right? I mean, it's blazing hot in South Alabama, but it's it's really nice up here in Minnesota. You know, oh, you know, I was up there in Minnesota last summer. I was fishing. We did, you know, we caught a bunch of fish. Had a fish fry. Oh, that's cool. I want to be your fan. I mean, it's it's, it's that's just a, a natural conversation, right? So let's talk a little bit about like. Um, I don't know if you could take the last word on that, but but let's talk a little bit next about like, are we calling fifty firms a week or what are we doing? Exactly. So I was going. to, You're not only calling just to find out about family and everything. Yeah. What what my graduate Saul did is we spent a couple hours one day just writing down all of the questions they could possibly ask. Yeah. You know, what's the exposure in my area? I want to run day claims. So what kind of exposure do you have? And and asking, like knowing your questions. So over the course of two or three weeks when you're calling these guys, you have a different question to ask besides how are your kids, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And the other thing is I went to a training when I first started. And at the end of it, they, you know, it was like, how do you get a job? And they gave me like eight pages of 300 IA firms. And you'll hear this from almost <laughs> all of the IA firms and most of the training companies. Just go apply to everybody. Yeah. And so you're out there and you're trying to keep track of the 75 people that you, you, you know, apply to. And how come they're not calling me back? And how do I create that relationship? So my suggestion is pick five. Maybe you pick, and so what are the five? Alacrity, Pilot, Sedgwick, right? Yeah. 
because they're the big biggest. boys. They're the big boys. That's what everybody picks. But look around and see who has, like in your area. If you're in Texas, there is a lot of small to mid size IA firms, a lot of them. So pick a couple of them too. Reach out to five. See what kind of response you get. If you get no response or if you're talking to one of them, they're like, yeah, you got to have a lot more experience than you have. Then they just, you don't call them back. Right. They just move on. And then you expand from there. As you get on rosters, because a lot of people are just going to want to put you on their roster. They're not going to want to give you a claim. Right. Almost all of them. You call them up, they're like, yeah. I'll put and you on why is that guy? Why would they want to do that? Because they need warm bodies when a storm hits. Yeah. So they can tell their carrier. <laughs> so they can tell their carrier. Hey, we got 1,600 adjusters. There. That's exactly correct. Yeah. And out of those 1,600 client adjusters, 1,500 of them are on 27 rosters. Yeah. Just like you will be, right, as a new guy. But it's that going back after when, you, when you're talking to one of those five and it's a good conversation – that's the one you want to go back to. Yeah. So let's say talk to five and only one's good. Great. The other four, out. Let me pick five more. Go out until you get, start somebody that's actually going to talk. Right? Yeah. There's, even at the big firms, there's a, there's some really good recruiters that know that when you're talking to them, they're evaluating you in that conversation. Yes. Just like you said, if you go in there anxious and everything else, they're evaluating that. Yep. Um, so you have to know what it is that you really want in the business. You have to have questions that are set. You got to be able to ha create that relationship and then build upon that relationship. It is not, I was lucky. You were probably lucky, but this isn't the good old boy network like it used to be. No. no. Right? So as a new adjuster, you're, you, you're going to create your own yeah. business. And just for the record, and I think your experience is the same way, but if absolutely, especially with certain firms, good old boy network, 100%. I came in with no good old boy con connection, right? And I don't think you did either. No, I did. Oh, you did? I fully. Oh, wait. You, I, 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 I had a good old boy who was Walter Pilot's friend. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, I did. So I had to kind of like like what you're saying. It's, right. It's kind of carve my own path. Right. And and like it, for me, it was different. It was, I was like, gee, this is easy to get into. And for my graduates, because we had 50 partners, it was easy for them to get in and get claims because we were able to really pick, you're going to reach out to these three first and then these three. And then because I knew who had coverage. So we were an anomaly in the business and it was, it benefited our graduates because sure. of my connections where most people, and certainly anybody that's listened to this, doesn't have those connections. So you have to create your own. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, we have we have our nine partner firms, and I think anybody who's who's listening to this that is certified knows that there is several of the firms are Johnny on the spot calling right back immediately, and then some of the other ones are you know it takes a little bit to kind of get them right. So, um, you know. start with your nine though. That's what I would tell anybody right, right. going through your program is start with your nine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Martin has a question here. He says, I retired from the seventh special forces group. Thank you for your service, sir. Um, at the end of the month, um, DD two fourteen tomorrow. I don't know what that means. I what? do. God knows what that means. <laughs> what suggestions slash guidance do you have for a veteran outside of this program? So obviously veteran adjusting school, not an option anymore. Um, he's in the, this program, my program. Right. So well, what, what else can he do? And I, I would say, you know, Le lever leverage your military experience. Yeah. yeah. For sure. You want to lead on your resume, how many years of service, 
what you did. And so even in the special forces, there were things that have to do with this organization, right? Commitment. Those are the kind of things that I would suggest that you actually lead um, your resume with. We always did. Yeah. Right. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I thought it was unfortunate, but a lot of these IA firms say, oh, we want to hire vets. We want to hire vets. And a lot of times that was a marketing ploy in my view. Sure. <clears throat> Especially for some of the bigger ones. But most will recognize your military experience for sure. Yeah. So lead with that. Yeah. Uh, Scott Haley says, just got back from corporate training last week. Uh, and got to see a bunch of old claim files. He says, man, you were not kidding about how average to bad some adjuster files can be. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, there's a low bar. What do you think about that guy? There's a very low bar. Yeah. And it, it, it will be easy for you to step just, just from this course, you're going to be better than 50% of the new adjusters out there. I promise you. Yeah. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You have, you have resources to come back on a library to come back on, to look at things and you are already going to be a step above and when you get out there, once you guys run a few claims and you get your first reinspection and you get another adjuster's stuff, you will know everything Matt's talking to you about, everything that I ever say about typical adjusters. Yeah. That's another thing. You know, you, you need to have education. So they're going through your course now. They're doing as much as they can watching your videos. But like you said, getting us level two certification, get a Hague certification, getting a, those are things you can not only go back to the IA firms, but they're also going to be education for you as you're moving forward for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big part of it. You know, there's, there's getting stuff on your resume, right? Which, you know, helps you get that first gig, but the things that help you get the next storm or the next you know, daily assignments, the next, whatever it is, the next, the next, job is your skills because you're it's a, the oldest cliche and you're only as good as your, your last, last claim, claim right <laughs> and it's true right so if, if, if you you know if you if you if you don't have any training and you somehow somehow manage to survive your first storm and you did a good job you're you're gonna they'll keep you busy they're gonna because the Again, that bar is low, and the vast majority of adjusters, well north of fifty percent, who, or especially new ones who show up on a on a cat site, um, aren't very good. And if you if you've got that process down, and this is what we teach, obviously, what you guys taught, um, the process is the foundation of everything else, and then you can just backfill and develop your skills as you go, the construction skills, the exact mate, the software, the this, the that. And you can, it's it's just the, pl the platform that you use to jump off from, right? Um, which is why I have my training structured the way I do, so that if there isn't a help room, right, then these people aren't dead in the water. They're able to, they get handed 40 claims and they can, like we were talking about, they got that snorkel, right? So if there's no other help, there's no somebody throwing a life ring out to you, you're still, you can still swim. You can yep. still, you're not sinking. Um, when that's, that's on a storm, that's what they're looking for. Yeah, exactly. Right? They'll throw a hundred new newbies out there and 20 will survive. And those oh, guys. Oh, if that. Right. I mean, probably those, guys, that. those guys that stay to the end are the ones that they're going to call back. Those yep. are the ones that once you're done with that storm, you ask, Hey, can I get some day claims where I live? Yep. Um, it's hard to come right out into day claims because you got to be a little more focused on them. Yeah. So typically a new adjuster is going to get out on a storm first. Yep. But the other thing you were to backtrack, if I may. Sure. Um, when you see, that storm in the in the Atlantic, it's coming off the horn of Africa, and you're like, okay, let me monitor it. I think there was one that just 
dissipated. Gordon. Just Gordon. Gordon's right? gone. Gordon didn't do what he was supposed to. But when you see that, that's when you're reaching back out to the companies that you're on the roster for saying, hey, are you going to put people on standby? Well, you know what? I really don't have coverage in North Carolina. Okay, great. Awesome. I'll call you another time. And then you call the next one. They go, oh, we have NCJUA, so we have a yeah. huge coverage. Great. Are you? Can you put me on standby? Then you... You're on that list, but it's because you're reaching out, not just sitting by your TV hoping that somebody's going to call you from it. NCJUA, that's uh, like that's North the, Carolina's wind pool? Yeah, it's North Carolina's wind pool. It's like Florida Citizens okay. or Texas Wind and Hail. It's the state-run agency. I'm going to drop that in the chat. So, um, Thomas Gallagher. Uh, he said, I had six calls from IA firms within two to three days of finishing FTD. And I apologize, Thomas. We had a call this morning that I canceled, and uh, I guess I, the notification didn't get to you, so I apologize for that. But I had Guy Grand here, so, I mean, come on. Can you blame me? Um, all right, so I got a... Um, Sorry, Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Brent says, I have my DHS located in the Northeast. I have several non-resident licenses, including Texas, Georgia, and as far as, far as Washington, um, basically just followed the suggestion from the FTD course. So I tell them coastal right now and then northeast, northwest for the winter and then mid Midwest for, for hail season. Correct. Uh, looking, and a lot of the Midwest states are non-licensed states. Right, right. Most of yeah, the whole yeah. northern plains. Yeah. So looking at this now, I realize that the majority of states are incredibly far from my home state. Realistically, should an adjuster have a specific mileage range from home state or is there a better way to manage distance and opportunities? If you're going to run catastrophe claims, you should have all of your boxes ready to go and you'll have 48 hours to get to the other side of the country. Yep, yep. That's it. Um, if you're running day claims, then you can actually have an area. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, and, and I would suggest to all of your people, too, to be asking for day claims. Right. If, yeah. if you don't get out on a catastrophe and you're getting on board with these people, ask them for day claims. Right. Yeah. They're going to they're a little more complex and you got to know more. But it can be yeah. um, if they give you a day claim, there's going to be somebody around that's going to help you walk through those first ones. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, too. Don't be afraid of your first claim. Don't be afraid to ask a question. Right. They every company knows if they give you your first claim, it's your first claim. Right. Yeah. And if you go and you try to I'm going to muscle through this, um, you're not going to meet the guidelines or the deadlines they want or anything else. So just do the work. Call on somebody. I have a question. What what do I need to do in this situation? But keep the file moving. Even if you turn it in incomplete, they'll get back to you and tell you what they want. Yep, that's true. And that's 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 good advice. And I think, um, you know, we are like right now at this very moment, this is the absolute tippy top peak of hurricane season. Like statistically, it's Correct. the look at the graph that is the actual peak. It runs out through the end of October, right? The predictions this year, whether they happen or not, are that this is going to be a late season, highly active. We still have, what, three or four major landfalling hurricanes that they're predicting to hit the U.S., right? So we'll see. Um, but, I mean, you know, it was crickets for a little while, and then all of a sudden there was a whole bunch of storms, and then we had Francine and Gordon which didn't do anything um and now it's crickets again there's one little disturbance out there in the Gulf, or in the atlantic right so you know if if you're like we're talking about a specific timeline for you know when should i call and try and get like a daily claim? i mean you probably could do it right now as long as you know you have you're fully on board with the company you're, you're fully licensed right and they if they have carrier certifications that you need to pick up like maybe they They've got like a Liberty Mutual thing, and you know, you know there's get Simbility CoreLogic has free um, training for Simbility. 
they have access, you guys have access to some ability training and adjuster TV where we kind of walk through the claims process with it. It's kind of, it's a basic training. It's not like, it's not like the, to the level of our Xactimate training, but it's there, right, to get you started. Um, and again, if you're a new guy and it's your first claim, they know it's your first right, claim. Right, exactly. So, so call in and be like, hey, listen, I know it's, it's you know, it's, maybe it's kind of slow right now. Or ask them and then they say, oh, it's slow. Well, hey, listen, you know, I, I do live in, uh, you know, I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I have, I have my New Mexico license. And um, um, I'm certified with these two carriers through you guys. And I've been to the ABC123 thing in Atlanta. You, you've already tried. Th this is what I would say. I mean, you've already tried to start building a relationship with the company. Um, would you guys be willing to give me, you know, a claim to try and handle? I've got Matt because as part of the, the FTD program, but you guys should know this. I, I say it enough, but you have access to me to, you know, if you need if you need to call, if you need to text me a picture of something, you're like, is this hail damage or not, right? Or what am I looking at here? If you get stuck, you fall behind, phone a friend, call, you know. So you have me to help you with that stuff. Right. Um, Let's see what really, they say. That's really great. Yeah. I my mean, copied you. My, so. my, my people paid a lot more money for that. <laughs> right. <answer. laughs> so that's that's a strategy, right? And and I think that, you know, probably could do that right now. You know, if you've got your ducks in a row already lined up. Definitely at the if this hurricane season ends up being a bust and they're not like just pouring waves of warm bodies on the thing and you're not one of those warm bodies who's got like a ace up your sleeve you know having training um definitely do that when you go when when it, the season winds down at mid-november you know right nothing's really happened so that would right. be no it's a it's if this is the career you want to have yeah then as you're building that relationship with the rosters you're on, you want to ask them that. Yeah. You know, just give me one claim. Let me figure out your guidelines. So the next year when a storm hits, I'm already on board. I know what you're looking for. I know what, you know, the file reviewers are looking for. I know what everything is. And a lot of these companies, they'll give you a date. It might just be a tree on a fence. Yeah. And it might be 250 miles away. Right. But if you're the guy that says yes, when that senior adjuster said no, pretty soon you might be taking the claims that are a hundred miles away. And so it, and it's two miles away. Yeah. It's the, it's the say yes, do it now and it'll pay in the end. Yeah. Right. And I, I think, you know, we started out as a cat adjusting company and then over the course of the first few years, we started adapting to actually training the day claims as well as CAT. Yeah. And that's why we were so successful at getting our adjusters working is because I went to the partners and said, look, if you give this guy a day claim, he's going to figure out what you want. And then when you get, send him out on a storm with 99 other newbies, he knows what you want. And so your chance of success is much, much greater. Yeah. So, so what was the, what did you have to tweak about your training to, to make it adaptable to date? Day um, more interior claims, more water claims yeah. based upon, you know, faulty sinks, hot water heaters. The, your typical day claim is going to be water. Yeah. Something broke somewhere. Yeah. And water got on my floor. Um, so those are the typical ones, small f fire losses, a kitchen fire, right? So there's not a lot of fire damage, but there's smoke in all the rooms. Yeah. Soot and stuff. Yeah. Whatever. So you got to go be able to do a soot test on all the walls and say, this bedroom needs to be painted. This bedroom doesn't need to be painted, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so we did a lot of that kind of stuff, sewer backups, talked about scenarios. But really, water claims, water claims are going to be the thing. That's the primary thing. Yeah. yeah. It so with daily claims, you know, even as a, when I was a staff adjuster in my territory, it was rare that I got on a roof. Maybe yeah. once a month. Yeah. I was sure. just getting on a roof. The rest of it was 
like sure. you said, slab leaks, busted water heaters, busted dishwasher line popped off. Guy Refrigerator leaving, line popped off. You know, even like the guy like leaving a bag of frozen chicken in the utility sink and then his somebody calls and he goes, he's got to run out and go pick up the kid and he totally forgot about it. And the, it just overflows and there's an inch and a half of water through the entire downstairs. The eight-year-old got out of the bathtub upstairs and left the plug in it. Yeah. Water going. Stretch Armstrong in the toilet. I mean, exactly. you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, and by the way, you know, I know you guys, a lot of you guys are, have really dug into the Adjuster TV Plus stuff, but Guy and I did, you know, we did a whole bunch of videos about smoke claims, sewer backup claims. We did a, uh, what did we do? We did a supply line break. We did an ice okay. dam. We did a, there's, and that's all in Adjuster TV Plus, you know. Um, it's basically kind of like, uh, Lorena says, I've learned so much from those. So that's, yeah, so all stuff's in there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it was super fun too. And we want to try and do more of that stuff for sure. So Lorena's got in a question actually here and she says, my husband, son, and I are looking to go out as a team and have, we have all strong construction and management experience, 30 years and fortunate to be in a position to make this jump together. We're all hoping to have level two by next week, uh, to have home state. Uh, can the team thing work with the companies? How would we put that into motion with them? What do you think, Guy? What a great opportunity. Yeah. Um, so this is going to sound, might sound a little weird, but it sounds like you probably already have an LLC. But my suggestion is make sure you have an LLC. Everybody needs to be licensed. Yeah. So husband needs to be licensed. Wife needs to be licensed. Son, is that what you said? I think so, yeah. Yeah. But everybody needs to be licensed. Um, and then when you go out on a storm, maybe your husband gets all the claims and you're helping your husband. Yeah. And your son's helping. But you're all licensed so you can actually do that kind of work. And the cool thing about that is, is the per diems and the write-offs now become doubles, triples, right? Yeah. Because everybody's in the business and everybody... So it used to be when I first started, husband and wife teams were always sought after. Yeah. And they still are. They are. They are. They still are, for sure. Because it's it's much more efficient. But the wife was never licensed, so they didn't have the write-off that you do if you have two licensed adjusters because yeah. they're both out on the same storm. Um, make sure you let the company know when you're applying to them that your husband and wife team and that you both have strong management and, and construction experience, and you're both level two certified. Um, the ones I ran in 04, I ran with a husband and wife, and I, I think I ran like 300 claims, and they ran like 850, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And so if, you're, if your husband's doing the scoping, let's say, you need to make sure you can read your husband's writing and that he writes his scope notes down so you can understand them because you might be out, he might be out there scoping 10 in a day and you might be closing them the next day. Yeah. So just make sure if you're running as a team, you guys are set up and you're organized that you know what each other's doing and you, you know, yeah. Take the things you're strongest at and and work on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, the husband and wife team thing, I think, is to teams in general. I think, you know, it's they can absolutely be beneficial and they can absolutely work really well. They do like you're just kind of alluding to. They do take a little bit of kind of startup to figure out who's got what strength. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So I tell people the, the most successful, put it this way, the most successful team I ever saw was a husband and wife team they both drove separately they had their own cars and they did their own claims he did eight or nine he was a heavy hitter so he did like eight or nine or ten a day hail claims you know uh -huh. but you can do that and she did four or five and then they had an assistant that ran their desks and they're, they're all their calls and everything with three that's great yeah, yeah. and that person wasn't even on site it was right. just somebody, you know, probably with a, behind a computer. Right. So if, you know, if we got your husband, wife, and son, um, there's a potential there. I think that, that and this is the, the other piece of advice I always give, or the main starting point is that, like, 
whoever's going to be the, the the lead person needs to probably do the all the stuff themselves at least for like the first x number of claims for sure um so that you do you know how you want it done? You're getting feedback from the firm and the carrier, like we liked your work or we hate the way you're doing this over here, you know, and then that way I can then, if I'm doing it, that I can go and then train up my assistant to do things that I need them to do. And when I was, I had, I did, I had an assistant for a long time that, that made my contact calls and kind of kept on top of my voicemail. Um, and then, which was the biggest thing that moved the needle the most for me because then I could concentrate on inspections. I, I wrote them up on site. So it was, I didn't have to worry about then getting on the phone for 45 minutes. Right. So. Yeah. I never wrote up on site. So I always got on the phone. Yeah. But you know, my first, before we started the school, my whole, I, I realized on my second storm, I needed an assistant. I just, it was just too overwhelming for me. Yeah. Right. Not that it was, I was just a slacker. So I took my son, my godson, my best friend who just lost his job, and all they did was make my phone calls and scheduling and yeah. make my lunches. Yeah, yeah. And then- Do your laundry. Do my laundry. It was huge. Yeah. It was huge. And then maybe after the first week or so, once I got my head into, like you said, doing the whole thing. So I know what the whole process is. Then I was able to say, okay, now I'm going to just teach you photos, teach them how to yep. do the, my photo reporting. And once they understood did that, then it was even, we became more productive, right? Yeah. Because now I had somebody to do that and they could still make my sandwiches at night before we went to bed. And then just a side story. I know you love my guy grand stories, Matt, but, so why you're here, right? But my godson, when I took him out, I took him on a storm in Plano, Texas with huge ass roofs. And we came back one day, I took a nap and I woke up and he goes, do you remember that program you gave me when I was 14 on how that CAD program on how to build a house? Xactimate has all of the same keystrokes. And he sketched a 37 plane roof within a half a square of the contractor. Wow. And I was like, boy, you just started making money. <laughs> so again, those are the things somebody needs to know all of it. Like you said, if, if both to whoever was just asking, if both yeah. of you take claims in the beginning and you run them and you you're sitting next to each other and you can help each other. So you get the whole process. Then you could go back to more of what I was talking about where one person takes the load. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it really doesn't matter. I mean, if, as long as they know you're running together, whether you have the claims of your husband or your son or whoever else, if they know you guys are all doing yeah. it together. And you have to be, so everybody should be licensed. If there's, I mean, we could talk about how three people would work together. Um, but, they also, also, everybody has to be certified for whatever that carrier is, if Correct. that carrier has the certifications, right? So if you're going to go work for AMFAM, AMFAM has a, or they used to anyway, a general certification. And like I had to, my assistant had to be AMFAM certified to make, to feel calls for me. Correct. Because they're talking to the, she's talking to the insured. Um, so there's, you know, I think a lot of times when people talk about teams, and again, there's a lot of ways to do this. And there's, you know, one way might work for this couple or team here and not work for this couple or team. But one thing I think people think is that they can, if they team up, they're going to do double. Double. They're not. And I don't think that that's the case, especially if they, um, the, I had a good friend of mine, he and his wife, she rode in the, sat in the car and they had walkie talkies and he called out the numbers and everything. And she, by the time he got back to the car, the file was done and they, they knocked it absolutely not right out of the park. Uh, but they were like in the car together all day long, you know, and if, if there was any miscommunications and they were, they were so good together um, that they, you know, they made it work really, really well right. for them. But I think if you have another situation where, she doesn't want to be sitting in the car all day long, just in the car, in the same seat all day long, 
or he, whatever, whoever's taking the lead on the file, that might become problematic, right? And the other person needs to be really good at photo reporting and yeah. estimating. Yeah, for sure. We have one of my graduates um, taught his wife to do photo reporting and the GLR writing to get it right. And because he used Route X uh, mm -hmm. roof sketches, right? So they brought in roof sketches that they paid 20 bucks. Didn't matter. They paid for all of them. Um, he could go out and inspect 10, 12 claims in a day. And by the time he got it home, she had dinner ready and they were done. Yeah. And that man does a thousand day claims a year. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. That's the only person I've, I mean, but the same thing, they worked so well as a unit that she didn't have to be in the car with him. Yeah. Right. Yep. And he sent up all of his photos through the iCloud and his scope notes because they had all of their, you know, quick codes and everything else. So by the time he got home, she was almost done yep. and the kids were ready for bed. And so so husband and wife is great. I never made double with the people I took because I was training them to be adjusters. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so I think that's the difference. Yeah. Um, all right. Anybody got any more questions? We got about 15 minutes left in the hour. Um, Martin says, just knocked out my Xactimate level one with a 96.66. Nice. Congratulations. That's awesome. Can I say something about Xactimate? And you probably already do, but you know, and he'll slap me later once we go off you guys if he <laughs> needs to, but I, I would suggest that everybody who wants to learn exact to make get the practice book. Yeah. Right. I think it's 60 bucks. It's 245 pages. Yep. Um, but go through that book and do all of the labs in that book until you understand it, because it'll, it'll train you in so many different aspects. Um, I think where it's lacking is on photo reporting and it doesn't say enough in there about photo reporting. There's a little, there's like one module yeah. in there for that. Um, but it's a, it's a great learning tool yeah. to be able to use. So there's a, Xactimate has, or Xactware has their online learning platform and they have like, they have a, there's a bunch of prep stuff in there and they have, the ILX is in there now. They have all this stuff all in one place. You can also take your level one, two or three exam through that platform and they have the books digitized. And oh, I think, yeah, and I think there was an update to the level one and two workbook. Um, and you could, I think, I'm pretty sure you could still buy it. The hard I think copy. it was like 60, but I bought yeah. hard copies for all of our students. So I think it was like $60 or something like that. Exact where. But you know that, again, I'm an old guy. I like paper in my hand because I can take a highlighter and highlight the things that are important to me. Uh, let's see, level one and two hard copy, 57 bucks. 57? Yep. Yeah. That's so, a lot of weight when you got to buy them by the... By, I bet. After 50. It's <laughs> a lot of boxes. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, again, it's the same deal. It's like, are you getting it just to have something to fluff up your resume with, or are you getting it to build your skills? And and it's, it's not... It, Honestly, it's it's not enough to just um, go and get the your level two, and then it, you, maybe it's February right now, and you're getting your level, you got your level two, and then you just you put that stuff away and you forget right. about because oh, I got my level two already, and then you don't work again until April or May. Um, you're gonna forget stuff. Yeah, and you know the the I think the I don't know how many of your students actually have a full working subscription most don't they use no. the right they use the free 30 days and then you're done yeah right so whatever you learn in 30 days i did that originally and by the time it was a year before i went on a storm and i remembered a zero yeah hence the reason for having a physical copy of a book yeah yeah right or if you can afford it before season starts next year Go ahead and pay the two hundred and fifty dollars because if you have the the demo version, you can't download 
um, all the price lists. So there's things that you, it's in the book, tells you what to do, but you can't really do it because you have the demo version. Well, they've made some changes during the last week. See how old I am? Well, so, <laughs> and this is something that I was, I've been on the phone with John because there was, they said, oh, well, it's going to be this way. And then it came out and it was not that way at all. Number one thing, apparently, and this may have changed since th I talked to John yesterday morning, apparently there's no more demo at all. F if you just come in off the street to their website and you're like, hey, I just want to download Xactimate and mess around with it and whatever, train on it. There's no demo. They, they, they hit your card immediately. They originally said, they were like, and this is what, we, when we do our Xactimate, you know, the meeting update for Xactimate certified trainers every right. month, they said, um, well, so what we're going to do going forward is you, there's no like, get a 30 day demo and then it just ends and then that's it. Or you call sales and get it extended. They're not doing that anymore. He said, we're going to do a 30-day demo, but when you sign, first sign up for it to download, you have to put your credit card in. And then at the end of 30 days, if so you don't cancel before that, yeah, it's 300 bucks. 300 bucks. So then Bam. they start hitting your card. Well, apparently they just hit your card immediately and you're just in. You're just 300 bucks. But they set up a training instances for XCTs, right? So they said... Um, for Xactimate certified trainers, if you're a student, you get students who are wanting to take their level one, two, or three exam, and you're training them actively or whatever it is, you know, or like we have our training in Adjuster TV Plus, uh -huh. they can get access. You can, I manually put them onto my training instance, which gives them free access to what basically amounts to the demo. And they, they, limited that even more so you can't just pick any price list that you want to like you used to with the demo utah you, orem yeah it's, it's, it's the ones that only go to the exams yeah. right so those are the yeah. ones that you got to use it's a training price list and then like two or three other price yeah. lists and no data transfer there's a watermark you know the, all the same stuff but and so for people who are you guys you know you're on this call you're watching this if you if you're I have to. I haven't done this yet, and I'm going to do it this afternoon after we get off this call um, to see if it works. But if you're working on your fast track um, assignments and your demo ends, and you can't re up it, and you got to get on my training instance, it doesn't. It, your assignments don't carry over, right? So it's it's when you get to jump into the training instance, the, the only free thing that they have now for students, it's going to have zero projects in it so i now i don't know how to do it i'm gonna have to probably get on with john again but apparently i can if you if you email me your esx files for the assignments i can manually put them into the training instance and then you'll they'll pop up in your i think so i'm gonna try it on their on their yeah desktop. and then when they open up their computer it'll it'll show those assignments but I have to do it on my end, so I have to have the yeah. ESX in order to, to do it. Yeah, it, it's it's a racket. It's a <laughs> it racket. It kind of is, <laughs> but you know they're the only pretty much the only game in town, so they correct. Kinda, but it, so for your students that are going through this now, if a storm doesn't hit, which is not what we're hoping for, but if a storm doesn't right. hit, then. And you want to still do this by next year, right before storm season, it's worth paying for a month or two months and getting back into Xactimate. We paid for an entire year's subscription for everyone, again, which is why we were so expensive, right? Right, right. But we paid for a year's subscription because I needed a full working version so I could take them through data transfer, take them through all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they knew it before they left. So you're going to need that information before you go on a storm. So getting done with your course, Matt, and then not touching Xactimate and, to, and hoping somebody's going to put you out on a storm, that would be very, very stressful. Very <laughs> stressful yeah. when you decide to turn on because you're going on a storm. Yeah. Again, it's back to education. And education cost right yep. they're paying you there's some they're gonna pay some others but 
paying $300 for a month of Xactimate is worth it. When you get your first storm after that, then you can buy the year subscription. And the other thing, and I told all my students this, I just paid $2,000 for you to have a year subscription. And if in between storms you're not using that program, you're a dumbass. <laughs> because right. they're, you're losing it. I mean, you you work pretty steady, but my first five or six years, I was a storm chaser. So I'd be done in November and not work again until, you know, July. Yeah. And exactly, it would change everything before then. So oh, yeah. a complete new learning curve while I had 50 claims that I had to make contacts with. So, yeah. Um, use your spend your use your resources wisely, and having that book to go through is one wise thing. If you don't have Xactimate hooked up, and then paying for it a month or two months before you decide to go out on that storm is going to be hugely yeah. beneficial. Yep, Lorena has a question here. Super easy answer. She says, uh, once we're on a company's roster, is it possible to get a discount? Company discount for Xactimate before a deployment, and I think so. I well, so the ones that I know of, like well, Pilot, is an example. You cannot get the dis discount unless you are actually deployed. It used to be that it didn't know if you were or not, but now it does. Like so, uh, I would just, I just would re up it, and then even if I wasn't deployed. Um, but now they say it, it senses or it has a trigger, some, some magic happens in the computer machine where it knows if you're deployed or not, and it will say, you're not deployed, sorry, you're not going to get the discount. Um, but uh, That sucks. But it's, it's significant. It's like 80 bucks. You know, yeah, 80, 90 the bucks. discount? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Not off, but like that's what you pay. It's like 80 or 90 bucks a month. So, and Crawford's got one. Alacrity's got They all, almost all. I the, think Sedgwick has one. Yeah. A lot of companies have so Big any, com bigger companies. the bigger companies do for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah, so it's worth calling and asking and it could be, you know, pilot changed their, because they've changed the demo thing. Pilot may have said, you know what, we're just going to give a discount to everybody. I mean, who, who knows? I don't know. Right. So you just call and ask or jump into your, if you're on pilots roster, you're on board with them, go into your, your pilot cat portal and look. And the, you know, yeah. you know, if you need to reach out to somebody, if they have a chat thing, it's been a while since I've been in there. You had a pilot number, didn't you? One zero one three five. One zero one three five. Mine was one two four eight. One two four eight. Mm -hmm. No way. Yep. Twelve forty eight. Wow. Nowadays, if you get a pilot number, it's, it's like two hundred two hundred and forty three thousand yeah. three hundred and forty two. <laughs> I think that they may have like reset the pilot numbers back in the late nineties or something. Yeah. Cause I wasn't like the 1200th adjuster on pilots roster. That's you know, cause they've been around since the eighties. They, change, they changed that right after you got in. They must have. That probably. When did you get on pilots roster? 98. 98. And I got on at the end of 2002. So four years, yeah. 8,000. That's probably pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably pretty yeah. accurate. Um, Twenty-five years, two hundred thousand. Brent, Brent right. says, two hundred forty-two thousand three hundred thirty-seven is mine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that just goes to show you, like, how many people come and go because there aren't two hundred forty-two thousand adjusters working claims. No. Across the whole no. industry, I mean, that's a no. quarter of a million. People. I think I it was maybe four or five years ago that pilot fi finally took me off i mean i was getting emails and text messages and stuff i'm like i got a school and you're my partner i send yeah. people to you now i don't go on storm yeah right exactly no i i get emails and stuff from people saying hey deployment opportunity you want to be put on standby i'm like hell no <laughs> <laughs> But I'll help you, like, with your adjusters if you want. Um, and I'll help him help you. Exactly. So we don't, I'm not seeing any more questions in here, but um, what do you guys think about Guy Grand having his own 
YouTube channel slash podcast. Would that be something you guys would be interested in? Would you, um, there's 15 people in here right now. Um, and if so, which I mean, why wouldn't you, what kind of content would you like to see? That would be amazing. Yes. That would be awesome. Like he's got so many stories, uh, and so much knowledge. They've trained so many people. I mean, his, his curriculum, I mean, it's six flipping weeks of, you know, eight hours a day. 40, hour, 40 hours in the classroom, plus Saturdays, plus at least another 30 hours a week of uh, homework. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and again, that's why we were expensive and everything else, but we had to be brick and mortar, and we had to take it from, like you folks, I just got my license, what am I going to do? to trying to get them out into the field. There's just so much information and you can never quit learning. I just drilled it in their head. And like I was telling Matt the other night, part of the reason for our success is I could be standing in front of you yelling at you all day if you weren't doing the right thing. So, but it was the most rewarding thing I ever did. You guys are getting into a really awesome industry it just it's going to take time and you're going to have to be patient and focused on it yeah what's the little the guy grand pep talk on, on day one for uh your your students like what's the i i can i promise you i can put you in the top 20 percent of all adjusters in the field in six weeks and we were only 21 days not dissing anybody but because i had 50 partners and and I was the person that was always talking to those partners. We were 21 days from graduation to first closed claim. So I know this is about how to get a job and all the rest of that, but we had, we had the benefit of me having 22 years in the industry and being able to talk to all the partners and knowing the CEOs when our students would apply to recruiting. I got a copy of it and then I would send that off to the CEO of the company and then they would make sure the recruiter pulled their name. We're not too far behind you. We have, uh, let's see here. I got our stats from last year. Statistics are cool. Yeah. So in 2023, um, how soon were you working after certifying as an FTD adjuster? 21% said immediately. Or before finishing the program, twenty-one another twenty-one percent said within thirty days, thirty-eight more said within sixty days, eight percent more said within ninety days, and then there's the last twelve percent that were still waiting for their opportunity. They may have been called, but they were like, "Well, I only want to do desk. I want to do right." To which I said, "Nice, nice. please don't do that." So yeah, um, I would have to sit down with the calculator and figure out if that was what how many days like on average that all is but it's not nothing um and i think it's probably a pretty good record at least compared to like they said that was only about not quite 10 times more than you so right <laughs> as far as your partners go yeah i mean 50 50 partners right so one of the things i would i have always said to all of my graduates and everybody i've ever trained or talked to here's the how do you eat an elephant and I'll bet every one of you could tell me how do you eat an elephant. But my question is, where do you start? And you start on his toenail because he's standing on your chest. <laughs> when you get that first claim, you're going to feel that. If you get deployed on a storm and they drop 40 claims, that's going to be a big bull elephant standing on your chest. Yep. And the whole idea is just take, you know, the one bite of it at, at a time is a cliche that we have heard and think about, but it's so true. I had a, I had a man, the manager that told me that true story. I got 200 claims 10 days after the storm and the first adjuster just bailed. So those 200 claims were fact or yeah, facts to me 
on a thermal fax machine and a hotel. <laughs> so I, yeah. that was, I'm quitting. I'm done. I'm not doing this. And that's what my manager said to me. After yeah. he said the other thing, first he said, what's the difference between a puppy dog and an adjuster? Do you know? No. The puppy dog quits whining after a while. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So there you go. Congratulations on what you guys are doing out there. I, I, I can't tell you how great this industry is if you really want it. Um, and you have a great mentor here and a great teacher. Um, when we were closing down our school, Matt is the only person that I would recommend or I do recommend at this point to anybody that wants to get in this business. So thanks, guy. I appreciate that. Kudos to all of you. Thank you for your service. Whoever was talking about Martin, uh, Martin. Um, and thank you, Matt, for having me up here to Montana. It was so cool hanging out up here. Yeah, man. Big time. So. Well, all right. Well, thanks so much for being on, jumping on here impromptu. And uh, Lorena says, thank you. Um, Martin says, all the great, inf all great information. Thanks. Cheryl says, LOL to the toenail. It's kind of a gross. I mean, you think about an elephant's <laughs> toenail. It's probably a that thick and a great big. It's very thick. And that elephant's like standing on you with just one foot and the rest of them are like uh -huh. doing a handstand on your chest. Correct. Not just like setting his foot on there. He's on full weight. Find out how you can get free access to my complete online course on how to become a highly paid independent insurance adjuster right here.